Hey guys, Shin here. Just wanted to come at you with a quick update to the Hamtasy build. Yeah, I just did one not too long ago, but I figure I'll give you guys another update. I'd say this change improves the build even further. I did a little bit of testing, did some theory crafting, and I'd say it it makes a noticeable difference. I'm also going to give you guys some more gameplay commentary, just a little bit more. I know a lot of you guys enjoyed that from the last video, so I figured I would do a bit more. Give you guys a bit more insight into what my thought process is during certain fights. Also, in there I'll throw some tips that you can use when using this build, things to look out for, things to aim for to give yourself more of an advantage when fighting opponents. Okay, so what exactly is this change that I've made to the build? I have taken one point out of discipline and put it up into defense. The main reason for this is the armored attack minor trait. Now, you may be wondering why put a trait on that is based on toughness when you're wearing a majority berserker gear. That's originally why I stayed away from this trait. I was like, yeah, I'm wearing full damage gear, I don't have any extra toughness, I'm not getting anything extra. But after thinking about it for a bit, and weighing a few other things, I realized that it's actually a lot more than you might think initially. Warriors have the highest base toughness of any profession in the game. So there's that already. That already gives you a decent bonus. Plus the fact that this build uses Melandra runes, which passively give you more toughness. I did some comparisons. I looked at what I would be gaining versus what I would be losing. By taking the one point out of discipline, you lose roughly 3% critical damage, and about a half second off the cooldown of your burst skills. That's not all that much you're missing out on. But what you gain by putting that extra point in defense is not only are you gaining 50 more toughness and 50 more healing power, 50 of each, it's nice, but it's not the core reason why I did this. By switching to armored attack, you gain roughly just a little under 150 power baseline. That's more than if you put two more points into strength. I actually did some testing. I tried putting those extra points into strength to get that Grandmaster trait, and it ended up not working because I lost out on Leg Specialist, which is very important for this build. That immobilize is a lot more important than you might think. So after that experiment didn't work out so well, I wanted to see if I could get a little more power without disrupting the core aspects of the build. After comparing it to the trait I would be losing in Discipline, which was Destruction of the Empowered, I realized that for the exact same reason I made the original big switch up into Strength, it's situational. Destruction of the Empowered is a situational trait. That damage boost only happens when your target has boons. Yes, boon application is very prevalent on roaming targets in World of the World, but it's not guaranteed like power is. Also, if your target has a lot of boons where the trait would benefit you a lot, more often than not, they have protection as one of those boons. Protection more than cancels out the max benefit you can get from Destruction of the Empowered. So I weighed that against the extra power I'd be getting just baseline in defense, and I figured it's probably worth it to give up the small boost in critical damage and the situational damage boost to get a guaranteed power boost. Alright, now that I've shown you what the change is, let's jump into the gameplay. This first clip has me going up against a Pistol Dagger Thief, there was a little bit of an encounter with a Staff Elementalist, but they ended up leaving or otherwise retreating shortly after this fight began. Against Pistol Dagger Thieves, I immediately assume they're going to be running a lot of conditions, a lot of condition application. So I'm very wary of allowing them to get a range advantage where they can just poke at me, apply conditions, and have their way. With this type of build... I try and get in melee as much as possible and keep them CC'd as much as possible because thieves don't have a lot of stability access. They have a lot of teleports, they have a fair number of stun breaks, but they don't have stability, which is lasting protection from stuns and other forms of CC. So what I try and do is I try and get in their face and just keep applying pressure, keep applying knockdowns, keep applying knockbacks, keep applying stuns, Anything I can do to put them on the defensive and keep them from teleporting away or otherwise applying conditions and putting the pressure on me, I deal with pistol dagger thieves by applying a lot of counter pressure. As you can see in this clip, 
I'm constantly in his face. I'm not letting him get very far away before I get back into melee. And eventually I force him to retreat completely using stealth and eventually just running back to his keep. Now, I had to run away as well because he had an entire gate's worth of guards there, so I wasn't going to hang around if there wasn't any point. This clip has me going up against a conditioned necromancer. There are two things I want to highlight with this clip. One, the use of reckless dodge, and two, the use of the environment. Reckless dodge, for those who don't know, is the one-point minor trait in the strength line that gives a small burst of damage at the end of every dodge. This needs to be used to great effect when using the Hamtastic build, especially after this update, because A, it scales with power, and B, it happens at the end of every dodge. This means that you are going to be getting extra damage every time you end a dodge roll near a target. The damage from Reckless Dodge can crit upwards of three to 4,000 every time, and with the Berserker stats this build runs, that can happen fairly often. That's a lot of extra damage you are essentially getting for free if you use it properly. You'll notice in the clip I am constantly dodging next to the Necromancer. I am dodging near him and as close to him as I possibly can in hopes of getting that damage burst off. The other aspect of this clip that I wanted to highlight was the use of the environment to my advantage. You'll notice that I get very low on health while trying to take down the Necromancer while relentlessly attacking him to the point where I do need to back off a little bit, otherwise I would die. There was a pillar nearby that I noticed that I was able to duck around and prevent the Necromancer from applying any more conditions to me, allowing me to rethink my strategy, bait him around the corner and even behind the wall to where I was able to use various control abilities through that wall to hit him around and otherwise get free damage off without him retaliating. I was then able to heal up a little bit and continually apply pressure to him after that which eventually threw him off guard and confused him to the point where he fell off the cliff and killed himself. Yet, even without falling off the cliff, I still would have been able to pressure him into death because of the amount of counter-pressure I was able to apply through consistent use of Reckless Dodge and my various control skills. Alright, that's going to be it for this update that Hamtast had built. I have updated the written guide. You can find a link to that in the description below. If you feel like it, go ahead and toss a comment down below, maybe a like to the video, or subscribe to the channel. All three are appreciated. Also, I've tossed a link to the stream. Feel free to stop by. That's where I normally am. And with that, see you around the stream or in the next video. Take care.